You want to acquire real-world skills instead of student loan debt? OFTC gives you an opportunity to succeed in a safe and caring learning community with flexible classes on campus and online. In just two years, you could be ready for a career in a lucrative field that you love. Whatever lies ahead, education and skills training from OFTC can give you the confidence to succeed. Oconee Fall Line Technical College. Think differently about college. OFTC is an equal opportunity institution. I am proud and honored to speak on the behalf of Stepping Stone and the great work that they have done in our community. We are very blessed to have uh, Stepping Stone here to assist not only our community and the victims with the spirit of excellence, but even to our law enforcement when it comes down to prosecuting these cases. Stepping Stone is epic when it comes down to the forensic interview, the evaluation, as well as the medical exam here, right here in Dublin, Georgia. For years, I've served on the board here at Stepping Stone in the past, and it was a task to get a sane nurse here in this area. And Brooke has done an excellent job with her staff to have a sane nurse to serve eight or more counties when it comes down to these types of investigations. You cannot ask for a better facility. So today I'm very proud to speak on their behalf and the great work they've done in our community. Welcome everybody, I'm glad to have with me today Tammy Beto, she is the Dean of Academic Affairs and we are, you can see some of the patients in the background here, they don't talk a lot Tammy. No they don't, thank goodness. <laughs> <laughs> and the good thing about them, you can actually make mistakes <laughs> as you learn. Exactly. You know we all have to learn. I remember uh, and we're up here in the, uh, where, where the nursing program is uh, for lack of a better word, but I remember when y'all got your very first I hate to say dummy around some of these people here. They may take offense to it, but I remember y'all got your very first one. We had a program out here and everybody was so excited about it. And now you have many... Uh, mannequins. Mannequins, thank you, because I feel terrible calling them dummies right in front of their face. So, <laughs> But uh, hey, good, the good news, last time we talked, we were excited about this new program, the Bridge Program. Well, y'all have already had a couple of graduating classes, haven't you? We have, and we've started our third cohort already. Okay, tell us about that. Well, the students, once they take their core, they complete for the Associate Degree of Nursing Bridge Program. Um, they have to have a license as an LPN, Licensed Practical Nurse, or a paramedic, mm -hmm. and go through the core classes, take the TEAS test, and their competitive interest is based on their GPA as well as that TEAS test. We normally accept 40 every fall mm -hmm. and it takes a year for them to finish the program. Well, wonderful. I, I know, and like I said, we were so excited about it and it was coming down the road and my goodness how time just slips away, don't it? Uh, as, as we get older, uh, that time slips away even faster, seems like. But yes. So, has it been everything that you thought it was going to be? Absolutely. We have wonderful faculty members. We have three um, who do a great job with the students, both in the classroom and, and at clinics, and they're well-rounded. One was an emergency room nurse, one was a med surge nurse, one was an OB nurse. So, you've got a lot of different areas there that they can play to each other's strengths in. I left, before I came to this interview, I was uh, interviewing some other healthcare people and I heard a couple of comments while I was there and I'm, I'm about to die to get your input on this, but I heard a couple of people say, uh, in healthcare, either you love it or you hate it. Uh, first of all, before I ask you the next question, what do you think about that statement? I think it's probably true um, I've seen students who come out here for a healthcare career because mama thought it was the best way to go mm -hmm. or uh, someone told them that they would make a good healthcare professional and the first time they have to touch a patient, a real patient <laughs> at clinic, uh, they change their mind or the first time that they see 
uh, certain body fluids or have to deal with blood, they know that it's not for them. Yeah, and I, I'm, I, I get so excited as I'm in the community and I see people that uh, have either graduated from Oconee Fall Line or like one of the respiratory therapists I just talked to was a graduate of here, but I had a procedure at, at uh, Fairview a couple of weeks ago and the lady come in to do it and she said, Mr. Dill, I wanna ask you a question. If, you, if it's no, it's okay. But we've got a student here with Oconee Fall Line. Do you, would you mind if she comes in and observes? I said, absolutely, bring her in. I said, I do a lot of work out at Oconee Fall Line. So believe me, I'm an advocate for OFTC. Uh, and she said, well, thank you so much because so many patients don't agree to that. And uh, if you're listening, and, uh, please, if you ever are at the hospital or doctor's office, they ask you that. Uh, they're not actually doing the work on you, but let them observe because you have to learn. I mean, you, you how else to, are you going to learn? <laughs> you have to have a starting point. There are yeah. so many things we can't simulate in the classroom. We can tell the students about it all day long, but until the rubber meets the road, yeah. then it, it doesn't always click. That's right. But I, it's exciting to me when I see them in the community and, and knowing, first of all, uh, I have full confidence knowing how they were taught out here. I, I see a lot of things from behind the scenes some people don't usually see, but, uh, but I'm telling you, y'all, you can have full confidence that they were trained by the best, by Tammy and her staff, and uh, uh, I'm telling you, it's just a wonderful, wonderful education out here at Oconee Fall Line. We're fortunate to have it, aren't we? Yes, I believe we are. Yeah, absolutely. You better say that. And as, and as I get older and um, having quality health care is more oh. important to me, I'm even more of a fan. Amen. Amen. I'm a baby boomer, so I'm, I'm in, that, um, in that age group where we're going to need it. And we depend on these people that are coming through these bridge programs and through uh, pharmaceutical tech or respiratory therapists or whatever it might be. Uh, we're going to depend on these young people and sometimes not so young people. They come back and get a degree in, in nursing. But well, let me ask you, I said all that to say this, but why should someone watching us now choose a field in healthcare? Well, I think we've all seen the importance of the healthcare field through the past few months uh, between our aging population and the COVID pandemic. Um, we have seen our healthcare professionals come to the forefront and we've had a window into what they do every day. Um, according to the U U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics, between 2019 and 2029, healthcare professions will grow by 15%, uh, creating 2.4 million jobs in the U.S. So we need to make sure we have qualified healthcare professionals to fill those slots. Yep, absolutely. I was with the president of the Georgia Department of uh, e uh, Chamber of Commerce here a couple of weeks ago, and that's one thing he told us. He was showing us the jobs in the next five and 10 years. And of course, healthcare was the number one field. And you know, a lot of people say, well, I just don't think I can be a nurse. Well, that's just one little part of, of being in the healthcare field. And what all, talk about some of the things that we offer here at Oconee Fall Line. Okay, well, we offer several healthcare programs. I'm gonna talk about four today. Mm -hmm. Pharmacy technology, radiologic technology, respiratory therapy, and medical assisting. Okay. Okay, let's take the first one then. Pharmacy technicians um, assist in preparing medications under the supervision of a pharmacist. Most of your pharmacies hire pharmacy techs and, and use them in that capacity. Um, we have an associate degree in pharmacy technician as well as a diploma program. And the basic difference in the two would be the core classes that the student takes. And yesterday, when well, we're filming this now, but yesterday was actually Pharmacy Tech Appreciation Day. Is yes, that, it was. I, okay. And we had a celebration for our students, uh, socially distanced. Okay, well, that's really good. Uh, I was doing a show out at Gayco with Bent Gay uh, last week, and uh, uh, there again, there was graduates of Oconee Fall Line in there. Uh, you may, you don't see those kind of jobs because they're more of a wholesale uh a pharmacy uh, than you do if you go to Thomas Center Medical Park or some of the local pharmacies and, and see them behind the counter. But um, but there is a great demand for, for these technicians, aren't they? 
Yes, there is, and uh, GACO is a very big supporter of our program. They usually have uh, practicum or internship mm -hmm. students every semester, and they've also provided some funding for some things related to the program here at the college. Oh yeah, Bent Gay. I mean, we could do a couple of shows on Ben and what he means to this school and, and also to this community. Respiratory care, talk about it. Okay, respiratory therapists treat patients um, with conditions of the lungs and of the uh, respiratory system. They do a lot of different things from pulmonary function testing to working in critical care. Um, our respiratory therapists have been on the front lines fighting COVID. We've, we've heard a lot about yeah. them in the news lately. Um, when they finish the program, they are prepared to sit to be a registered respiratory therapist or an RRT, which gives them their license to go to work. Okay, and how long does it take to accomplish that? Once they complete their core, mm -hmm. it's four semesters in the program, which is roughly a year and four months. Okay, and all these jobs we're talking about, I call them, they're good paying jobs and we don't have to get specific what certain fields make, but uh, it's, it's above average wages. Uh, I, I guess we'd be safe saying yes. that. Uh, so, um, uh, and I'm telling you, respiratory, uh, there's so many people with respiratory problems. So there again, uh, as the baby boomers, as we move uh, I mean, and especially me, I'm 60 years old. I, I, I know how important it is when you go to, uh, when I go to see my uh, doc, Dr. Agarwal, my pulmonary guy, uh, for him to have people working for him because everybody can't be a doctor and we don't need all doctors because we couldn't accomplish the ultimate goal. But, uh, but we need so many people. When's the next class start where if somebody's watching now and they say, you know, I keep hearing respiratory, my best friends in respiratory, and they keep talking about it. When's the next time somebody can start there? We accept in respiratory every fall, mm -hmm. so we just accepted in a co cohort. However, there are core classes to complete before you're accepted, so we take students in those core classes any semester. Okay, medical assisting. Okay, your medical assistants typically work in an office or in an outpatient setting. They are trained to work both in the clinical aspect and the administrative aspect, which pretty much means they can work in the front of the office or the back of the mm -hmm. office. And that program takes about a year once the core is completed. Okay, what are they doing? What's you know, when I, I see all these ladies and men behind the counter at the doctor's office or whatever, what does a medical assistant do? A medical assistant is trained in medical office procedures as far as checking the patient in, checking the patient out, filing insurance. Uh, they also are trained in the back part of the office where they're calling the patient back, taking the blood pressure, doing some minor uh, type things such as sticking a finger for glucose. Um, they can give shots. It's different than, it's not like working in a typical office. That's really the point I'm trying to make to the viewers here. You know, yes. office work uh, in a typical office, which I'm not making a lot of it, but it's just different than you working in a, a, a physician's office or medical clinic. It is. You're dealing with a lot of different personalities, both mm -hmm. from the healthcare professionals you're dealing with, as well as the clients that come in who may be ill, may be sick and been sick for a while and just really are so sick that they can't take the time to be courteous to you and you have to be learn to be patient and you have to learn that you know this may not be the way they normally would treat other people but right now they're hurting pretty bad that's right we got to do something okay the fourth prong here we want to talk about was radiology radiology technology. See if I can spit that out there. Help me with that. Sure. Uh, radiologic <laughs> technologist <Thank you. laughs> is trained to take x-rays to help mm -hmm. diagnose a patient. Um, it's a very good program, very high demand. And these folks typically, um, when they graduate, are prepared to take the ARRT, which is the American Registry of Radiologic Technology, mm -hmm. so that they can go to work. We accept students in this program every spring, so we will be accepting new students in January. Okay. Of course, there's, there are core classes, so students can come in at any point and begin taking those core classes to be ready 
when they want to compete. That's right. And last time, I think last time we talked, one time you and I have talked, we had Chris Kersey here with us, uh, and he's the head of uh, radiology at Fairview Park Hospital and a graduate uh, right here at Oconee Fall Line. So uh, uh, the sky's the limit. And, and you think about it, uh, Tammy, uh, our largest employer in Lawrence County is the VA hospital. They've got, on any given day, you know, it's about 1,500 the last time I asked, and it, with all the cars sitting out there, it looks like 3,000, you know, but. Uh, so they're the largest employer. The second largest employer is Fairview Park Hospital. They've got another 800 or so. So, you know, simple mathematics there. You know, we're pushing 2,500 or so employees in many, many fields. And the fewest of those are the doctors. And the rest of them are the respiratory and the medical technicians and, and, and the radiology people and, and, and so many fields. So um, with those being our two largest employers, there's probably a job, and if not, Macon uh, is another thousands and thousands of jobs. So um, you're pretty well guaranteed to get a job if you enter one of these fields, aren't you? Yes, we have a very high job placement rate, and all of those programs perform clinical rotations. And a lot of times, those clinical rotation uh, preceptors are watching our students. They want to know who's the best. They want to see who's going to follow the proper protocol. And at times, our students have jobs from their clinical rotation site mm -hmm. before they graduate. Yeah, well, just like the girl I was talking about that watched my procedure, uh, if she's doing, and, and she seemed very conscientious to me. I was very, uh, uh, I was very impressed with her, I'll tell you that, not only in the way she carried herself, but I could tell she had been trained properly in the questions that I was asking her. Uh, but uh, so when she, this, let's, let's take this girl for example, she does a good job in her clinicals. They're watching that and they say, we better gobble this girl or this guy or whatever. We better gobble them up because, you know, she, he is a good employee. Exactly. And many times the students won't have the certification that comes at the end of the program yet but they'll hire them on a probationary st uh, status in hopes that that certification is going to come. And if it's a truly good student that they've seen doing right things, odds are they're going to pass their certification exams. Okay, and uh, we gotta take a break. When I start talking to Tammy, we just talk, talk, talk. Now we gotta take a commercial break. We could just carry, and we probably during this commercial, we're gonna keep talking, so. <laughs> but uh, y'all stay with us. Not only are these good jobs, good pay, but wonderful benefits, I'm telling you. Uh, it, it, they're just wonderful benefits. So uh, you're gonna to wanna to stay tuned and listen to this. So we'll be back right after this. Hi, I'm Anna Grace Myers from Myers Equipment and Supply, inviting you to come in today and see our full line of Gravely Zero Turn Mowers. For more than 100 years, Gravely Mowers have been fueled by a constant drive to improve. Built to mow the distance, find your new Gravely Mower at Myers Equipment and Supply, 301 North Jefferson in Dublin. Allen's Heating and Cooling is your licensed Amana equipment dealer. Trust Allen's Heating and Cooling to install and service your heating and cooling unit. Allen services all brands and with the purchase of a new Amana, offers a lifetime compressor warranty. Call Sean Clark or any of his friendly staff at Allen's Heating and Cooling. Your Amana dealer. Amana lasts and lasts and lasts. Hi, I'm Jeff Cannon, President of Citizens Bank of Lawrence County. When we began looking for a location for our second Dublin banking office, the historic Henry Building looked like the perfect spot because Dublin and Lawrence County is our focus and making banking easier and more convenient for our customers is our goal. Citizens Bank of Lawrence County, member FDIC and an equal housing lender. A local full service community bank offering quality banking services. Citizens Bank of Lawrence County, now open in downtown Dublin. Welcome back everybody. Continue my conversation with Tammy here. We're just talking during the break about some things. And uh, one thing I do want to stress is uh, uh, people, you know, when I was growing up, I was telling you off camera, we usually, most of us had to leave town and go, go somewhere else to find a job because we were just a little bitty town. Well, fast forward uh, 43 years since I graduated high school. Now, uh, like this young boy I met this morning, graduated from West Lawrence in 2017. He gets his BSN in May. He's going to stay right here 
and work, raise a family. His, his mom and dad are here, his sister, brother. Uh, so things have changed through the years, haven't they? They certainly have. And if you want a job in health care, Dublin is an excellent place to work. Um, as you and I were talking in the break, you've got the VA Medical Center in Fairview, but you also have a lot of doctor's offices and outpatient centers in the area as well. Okay, let's dig a little deeper in uh, these four programs we were talking about, uh, uh, radiology. Uh, let's talk a little more in depth about that. Okay. Um, these students typically, um, they diagnose. Mm -hmm. Some of our programs treat and some diagnose. So what they're doing is actually treating, or excuse me, is actually diagnosing um, and helping the physician so that the physician can make a treatment plan mm -hmm. to help the patient get better. Okay, pharmacy technician. Okay, our pharmacy technician students, you see a lot of them behind the counter at Kroger, yep. behind the counter at your other pharmacies, uh, preparing the prescriptions. Uh, everything has to pass through the pharmacist and, and they are under his or her supervision. Uh, but it's very much a needed field. Yeah. Okay. When I'm standing there at my pharmacy and I love, you know, please buy local. Uh, I know you can order stuff offline and uh, I just want to insert this commercial here, but you help these people have jobs in this day and time where it's so easy to hit a button on your computer, order offline. And I know sometimes you have to order offline. I realize that, but uh, you sitting there now at home, you're sitting there on your couch or in your chair, or you're all sitting by the dining room table right now, you are creating jobs. And that is so important. You mentioned a while ago, Tammy, uh, how y'all assist them get jobs. You, well, you can't get them a job if we're not doing business with these local companies, can you? Exactly. And that's why it's important that we do take care of our health care needs here, yes. as well as other needs. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, respiratory technician was another point, uh, another point we were talking about. Uh, let's talk about a little, there's so many fields there, you know, uh, you, the CT machine, or the MRI machine, or taking x-rays, or all these different things, so there's, there's different fields. And let me ask you this about respiratory. Let's say you want to work with the MRI machine. Do you have to go to school longer or different courses, or how does that work? Well, it's actually the radiologic technology field that you're talking about. Right. To get MRI, we do have a program for that. It is totally online and takes two semesters to complete. We also have a CT program or computed tomog tomography program that you can take that is online okay. as well. Um, another modality under radiology is sonography, which is a program we just recently began this fall and um, are very pleased with how things are going there. Yeah, and that was, uh, the ultrasound falls under that? Yes. Okay, well that was the actual test I was having taken recently, and the young lady that goes to Oconee Fall Line, uh, and Emily and I were talking about this on the phone this week, but so she's in that first class, right? She is, and in their first semester, they're only observing. Wow. So okay. she was not allowed to actually do anything right. with you. But they're practicing in the lab on um, each other, yeah. actually, and on simulations that they have. Okay. Uh, such a, a, a great field, and isn't it wonderful? So what am I hearing this is a new program? Is that what you're saying? It is a brand new program for us. Mm -hmm. We have been, students that we had enrolled in the program have been working on CORE so far, but they actually started in program. We selected 10 students, so it's pretty competitive. And um, those students started in the fall, and they will finish at the end of next fall. Okay. Medical assistant, is that something that y'all had for quite a while? Yes, medical assisting has been with the college for quite a while. Mm -hmm. Okay, and we pretty well covered it pretty well in depth a while ago. And of course, uh, respiratory technician. Uh, talk about that a little more. Well, your respiratory technicians you see all through the hospital. And that is the main place that they work, but there are some other um, instances or some other places that they would work as well. They do things from asthma treatments, uh, different types of testing. 
where you're seeing what your different capacities are when you're breathing in and out, mm -hmm. um, to seeing a patient post-op and helping them learn what they need to do to not get pneumonia, mm -hmm. um, to the critical care aspect that so many of them have been involved in with the COVID crisis. And there's a lot of those in our local hospitals. I know, and I ask everybody, I say, no, no, where did you go to school before you do this to me? And I hear so many times, Oak County Fall Line or Heart of Georgia Tech, you know, right. I'll hear that, which, you know, it's all the same thing, but, uh, but it is exciting. And I know it is to you. And, and let me ask you this, when you're out in the community at fill in the blank, I'm not gonna say a particular store cause I'll be, favoring somebody over another, but you see somebody out in you shopping for groceries and they went through respiratory therapy or whatever, and uh, you meet them in the community and they're doing good and they're successful. How does that make you feel? Oh, I am so proud when I see one of our graduates, especially when I know it's somebody who has been a success story. Mm -hmm. And I could name one in particular right now that I'm thinking of that I won't name, but this particular respiratory therapist was working at Phoebe Putney mm -hmm. during the pandemic and still works there. Mm. So, you know, they saw a lot of COVID action. And when I see him, you know, I'm just, I'm so proud. I'm like a proud mama yes. to see that, you know, he has been taking care of, of people. Yep. And y'all see her face just then. You got, I got this camera on you over here. Y'all see that, you got a close up of Tammy there, but, uh, uh, but you, you was proud then. I could just see the glow when you started talking about it. So I, I believe, of course, I believe whatever you tell me anyway, but I have learned so much through the years from this lady right here doing shows with you and, and working out here at Oconee Fall Line. But uh, uh, it's just a great place to get an education. And to that person watching us now, Tammy, I want you to speak to that individual watching now. Why should they choose Oconee Fall Line? Well, we have seasoned faculty members that truly care about their students and about what they're teaching. Um, the students receive lecture and lab practice while they're here at the college. And then we send them out to the clinical sites and our students get a lot of clinical hours and we want them to perfect their skills mm -hmm. so that when they're done with us, they're fully prepared to go to work. And I'm not sure if we've talked about this before, but we actually have a warranty on our students. Wow. Where if our students within two years of graduation can, um, does not, or is not able to pass a certification exam that is linked to our curriculum or cannot perform something that is linked to our curriculum, we'll retrain them for free. My goodness, I've heard it all now. Uh, a warranty on an education now, that's unheard of. Uh, I'm signing up before I go today. I think I'm going to get, <laughs> if I can get Tammy as my instructor out here, uh, I'm going to go ahead. Emily, get the paperwork ready over there behind the camera. Let me sign up. I'm getting a warranty. Isn't that great, though? It is great. It, means, mean, that, it means we stand behind what we do. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Well, you kind of stole my next question from me, but let's see if, I want you, let's see if you can expand on it. But I was going to ask you what sets the uh, program here apart. Well, that's a good start right there. What else would set y'all apart here in the Allied Health Program? Many of our programs have program accreditations, meaning we've received a stamp of approval from the agency that governs what should be taught in that particular field. Uh, and in some cases, we have a stamp of approval that they need before they can actually sit to test. I mean, a student can't just go to uh, correspondence school and then go and test for certain mm -hmm. program areas, but we have that seal of approval. Oh, uh, and they, these are just a couple of things. There's many things that set y'all apart. We can't get to all of them in this one show, but uh, I wanna go back to clinicals just a minute. Um, without these local hospitals, not just Fairview or the VA, uh, without them, this program could not be a success, could it? You're exactly right. They're our main clinical sites. We do have clinical sites all around our 11 county area, but most of our um, service area is rural. So there are not a lot of choices when you're looking for 
a sonography program that has uh, somebody who has their RDMS certification as the sonographer and they do a certain number of exams per year, which is what our accrediting body requires. So without Fairview and without the VA allowing us to come in, mm -hmm. we would have a very difficult time. Yeah, you, those clinicals are just, you got to have it. They're so valuable. You, the, back to the hands-on that you mentioned a while ago. is, uh, And I stress to you again, if you're just joining us, if, if you're getting a, a procedure or a test at the local hospital or doctor's office and they ask you, can a student come in and observe, please let them come in. They're not actually doing the procedure on you, but let them come in and, and learn and, and you're being a part of their education. And to me, uh, and I've had it happen three or four times now, to me it's rewarding to know that all I'm doing is laying there. You know, <laughs> I don't really have nothing to do, but I can just lay there and help that student. I exactly. think it's great. Exactly, and we always appreciate the community's involvement and the community's help. Okay, someone watching us right now, and they say, you know, I think I'd want to do it. Mama's a nurse, or daddy's a respiratory therapy, or whatever, and I'm really not sure. Instead of them, uh, and you got to have the core classes. Let's set that aside a minute. I know you got to do that, but instead of just signing up and getting in the program and not liking it, is there another route? Can they come in and, and visit or take that and run with yes, it. Yes, right I there. would suggest anyone who's interested in a particular pro program to look that program up on our website. And if you look on the far right side, we have links to advisors for that program. Those links are directly to an email. They can email those program advisors. Um, many of them are just ecstatic about talking with students. They love what mm -hmm. they do. Yeah. Uh, and they they want to talk with the students. Yeah. So uh, a student or a prospective student can uh, communicate with them and get more information. And everybody does not offer that, I'm telling you. And that's another reason that sets Oconee Fall Line apart. The website's real easy to maneuver. It's oftc.edu. And uh, it's just popped up on the screen, so just write it down there. And, uh, and whether it's this program or one of the a hundred and something other programs that are offered here, uh, we offer the same thing. So you just go right there and, uh, and look, uh, email the advisor, message them, and, and Tammy's absolutely right. I, I have not stopped anybody out here, that would, whether it was in computer or, or, or pharmaceutical tech or whatever, uh, that wasn't willing to stop and, and talk about because they have such passion about teaching these students, don't they? Absolutely. Our instructors are passionate about what they do and some of them still work in the field on weekends just to keep those skills current yeah. um, and just love what they do. Yep, yeah, absolutely. Well, we love what we do, so we got to take another break, okay? And we'll be back right after this. Portions of this program are brought to you by CurePoint Cancer Treatment, 2406 Bellevue Road in Dublin. At CurePoint Cancer Treatment, we're bringing you state-of-the-art cancer treatment right here at home. CurePoint Cancer Treatment. Check us out on Facebook. I'm Don Carver with Dublin Nissan. Giving back to our community is at the heart of our business. At Dublin Nissan, giving back means joining the fight against breast cancer. Buy from us in October and we'll make a donation to local charities for the fight to stop breast cancer. Only Dublin Nissan delivers the Frontier Pro 4X at over 4000 off MSRP or the 2020 Nissan Altima SR as low as $22,777. Call, click, or come see us. Dublin Nissan, the only dealer you will ever need. Quality products and installations since 1985. That's Four Seasons. Welcome back, everybody. Look who I lassoed in here on the set, uh, Emily Rayleigh. And uh, everybody knows Emily. We've talked many times. And um, first of all, 
uh, we've got a mount going to pop up there. First thing I want to talk to you about, we were talking on the phone the other day mm -hmm. about the coverage area. Uh, me and my wife are on the way to Augusta last week and got to go by Oconee Fall Line in Jefferson County. I was yeah. so excited. I mean, <laughs> who gets excited about seeing uh, a, a college? But um, I had never seen the campus there. I, mm -hmm. I think I've been by there, but just mm -hmm. really hadn't noticed it. But uh, y'all cover such a wide area. And looking at this map here, I measured it. Uh, I went on my GPS, matter of fact. But from that top of that map you're looking at in Warrington down to Helena, it's actually 92 miles. Mm -hmm. That's a long, and I know y'all cover, what, 11 counties? 11, 11 counties. counties. Mm -hmm. But you figure... Let's just say almost 100 miles. That's pretty close. Yeah. Uh, that's a big coverage area. It is. It is. It's, it's a big coverage area and, you know, 11 counties. That's, a, that's like 11 communities, you know, with um, various populations and yeah. different makeups. And, you know, we're strategically placed. Uh, we have um, our two main campuses in Washington County and Lawrence County. And then we have two extension centers. Uh, in Jefferson County, which is the one you passed by, mm -hmm. and then uh, in Helena McRae. So we are strategically placed in those areas to um, provide our services um, so that within our 11 counties, we should be able to meet people's needs for education and skills training to help them get to work um, conveniently, a location that's convenient to them so that they can yeah. say, hey, I have a place I can go where I can better my life and my future. Yeah. And to be able to to get there and not have to drive uh, to Athens from Dublin, you know, that's a long, you couldn't commute to Athens and back every day. Right. I mean, it'd be almost impossible, but we are out your back door. That's what's good about it. Uh, and, you know, uh, one thing, and we're in the Livingston building is where we're actually filming this. And uh, Mr. Louis Livingston, before he passed away, um, this is how much he loved this community and how important the education was. He's one of the reasons this school is here, as a matter of fact. And I've said before with you on the air, when Mr. Livingston has been gone for 100 years, what he did in this community will still be carrying on mm -hmm. through the people getting educations. But what I want to say, right before he passed away, he was talking to me about literacy mm -hmm. and about high school dropouts. And I didn't really grasp it until probably a year or so later when I started seeing the numbers. You shared a few more numbers with me a while ago, but I've looked at those numbers. We live in a, uh, a generally poor type area, rural Georgia. So mm -hmm. not just here, but rural Georgia mm -hmm. is like that. So it's more important than ever to get an education in it. It is, and you know, we do live in a our section that that the college covers you know it is you you might kind of think well i don't maybe sometimes i f might see poor areas mm -hmm. but you kind of don't realize until you look at some of the numbers that's right um what a need there is and there's a reason that oftc is here and where we are and it's not just because we're trying to say oh we want to compete with all the other colleges out there and it's not we're here for a purpose and that's yeah. to serve uh, in a capacity to train a workforce. Um, and like you said, there's there's no better time and there is a need, there is a need. And um, because people within our areas, and this is all over the country, but um, you know, there's a need for a good job, yes. a way to provide for your family. And what OFTC does is we offer opportunities for you to get training, um, knowledge so that you could say I can there is a field that I can directly go into work after graduating with from one of these programs in two years or less and I can go get a job and start earning that paycheck absolutely well in Lawrence County I know the numbers but 26 percent of the people that live in Lawrence County are living under the poverty level so we're basically saying one out of four mm -hmm. uh, people are living in poverty well the world we live in now, there's no, I'm not saying there's no excuse for living in poverty, but there's no excuse for staying there mm -hmm. because um, uh, it's a cab ride away. It's a, you know, and, and I, I know people who have, I've seen get on their bicycles and come out here, mm -hmm. uh, catch cabs. 
But now more than ever, it is time to get your education. It is. And, um, you know, I know it can be intimidating to think, you know, like you said, if if you are in that low income line and you mm -hmm. think, you know, gosh, I mean, what can I do? You know, we have adult education programs that are yeah. free. Yeah. You can get your GED and then you can start, um, you know, that will enable you to uh, go further and get a job or you can get, uh, you know, a higher earning rate. And then, you know, we have programs that you can go right into that, um, from with your GED, you can just transition right into and start into that two-year program, that one-year diploma, whatever it is. And, you know, even our truck driving program, you don't even have to have your GED. And you can make oh my tons gosh. of money. Yes. You know, I just, there's so many, so much opportunity. And, you know, God designed us for work. You know, we're, yeah. work is a good thing. And yes. so, you know, if, if you need a job, if you need to work, then you know, get out there, come to OFTC, let us help you get whatever you need to be able to go out there and get a great job so that you and your family can thrive. Yep. I was just in a doctor's office here recently and a physician's assistant was encouraging her son to go into the healthcare field. Mm -hmm. Mama, I don't want to be in the healthcare field. Well, you need to be in the healthcare field. Mm -hmm. Well, she did what any good parent would do. She wanted him to be happy and to go in something he'd enjoy. Mm -hmm. He wanted to be in the truck driving business. Well, he came to Oconee Fall Line. He got his degree in truck driving. He started working. Now he's bought his own truck. He's got his own business. Uh, but he started out making great money. Mm -hmm. So, and the program's only, what, six months? Yeah, I think even ten. like 10 weeks, 10 to 12 weeks. So. And, and make $60,000 a year. And I, I'm throwing out a number because I know some have graduated and, and started making 60000 a year. It's hard work, so it was a lot of things. Yeah. But to make a thousand plus a week uh, and only come to school 10, 15, it's, I'm gonna just say even six months, mm -hmm. uh, that's incredible. Yeah, and there are area, I mean, it's such a, a need for um, people with that skill yeah. to know to have that CDL and to uh, have the knowledge and experience in driving on the road. Uh, we have trucking companies all around our area uh, with I-16 and the Port of Savannah. There's lots of opportunities. Um, yeah. So it's, it is a great field to go into and um, something that could be a good start. Absolutely. And every time we have career day out here, uh, there is so many trucking companies. I'll go around and interview different people that are here hiring. And uh, one of the most popular uh uh, booths is truck driving companies. They're here from everywhere hiring. Mm -hmm. Another one, uh, I went to a ribbon cutting recently. A uh, woman opened her own uh, uh, hair, hair cutting place. Salon. Salon. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> and I need a woman to help me with that. That sounds like a man, don't it? <laughs> but uh, she came here and got her degree in cosmetology. Mm -hmm. uh, and now she's got her own business. She started, it's thriving. So, uh, and I know Kaylee Veal personally, uh, she does a wonderful job with those ladies in cosmetology. She, mm -hmm. And she has that passion Tammy does for, for nursing, right. except in cosmetology. Uh, and you find that throughout, whether the diesel mechanic or truck driving or uh, pharmacy tech or criminal justice or, uh, or, or whatever the field, these instructors are passionate, aren't they? They are, and they, they've they been there. They have the experience. They've been in the field. Um, so they're able to really bring their students, you know, some excitement, some knowledge, some wisdom of, you know, hey, these are things that we have to do for state boards, and it's important to know, but here's some other things that you'll only learn in the field. That's you know? right. And that goes from something like cosmetology all the way down to the, you know, to the, the realm of the, T and I programs, the mm -hmm. trades and industrial with diesel and automotive and welding yep. and machine tool and electrical. You know, there's just our instructors. They are passionate about what they do. Uh, they love it, or they wouldn't be here doing it. And they they know that there's a need, and they want to to train. You know, the future workforce. And they've been here. That's what gets me. These instructors, uh, most of them, have been here for years and years. Uh, people like Kevin Livingston. Uh, who have been here so long, so you don't stay somewhere you don't love. Right. 
and uh, and somebody like Kevin, I'll, I'll pick on him for a moment, but uh, he is so passionate. He wants you to learn it so bad, mm -hmm. uh, and and he is so knowledgeable. He's owned his own business, and and he's brought that to the classroom. It's not like I mean, same in truck driving or whatever. It's not like they went to school for it and now they're going to teach it. They've been in the world, in the real world. So, uh, like you said a minute ago. These are things you got to know to pass that certification test. These are things you might not ever hear again, you know, right. but, but those are the kind of instructors. So um, uh, uh, turnover rate has got to be low at Oconee Fall Line. Yeah, well, you know, one of the things kind of in association with that, you know, our instructors, they stay in touch with the, with the graduates. Um, they help them get jobs. Um, you know, I was over in electrical recently and uh, Lee Radney has job postings pasted, taped to the door. Um, you know, he's always, they're always looking for opportunities to try to help students uh, get those jobs. And he has a number of students who are um, already employed, uh, you know, while they are still getting that mm -hmm. degree. and. Um, our graduates do get employed. We just recently um, received our our updated numbers for the year. I think we're on getting those numbers from 2019, but 100% of our graduates go out and get jobs. Wow. Um, you know, some of those might not have might not have the job exactly in their field, but we have close to 90%, um, close to 90% who do actually get the jobs in their field. But our graduates go out and they get jobs. And yeah. that's the point of coming here is to, um, like I said, our mission is workforce development. We want to train the workforce. We want to help our students um, thrive and start that career and uh, change their lives. Yep. Uh, and I don't want to skip, Pat. I don't, I don't want nobody to miss what she just said, but 100%. Uh, let's don't get lost in that number there. That shows you. Uh, and I've seen it from the first day I ever walked in here many, 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 many years ago now, but, uh, but to see the people that are going to work in their field at the, at the, at the pharmacy or, or, the, or at the police department or wherever it might be, truck driver, uh, and then 90%, you know, even at 90%, that's mm -hmm. just incredible. And Lee Radney, I mean, come on, he's another one of these that I just saw on Facebook the other day. Uh, he was celebrating his ninth year, mm -hmm. and he's been out there in the real world. Mm -hmm. You know, he's worked in, in some uh, some very uh, important jobs and made really good money, mm -hmm. but now he's in the classroom teaching and sharing that knowledge with other people. Yeah, and so many of our instructors are just that same exact story. I mean, they've they've been out in the field, but they've they come back and they have such a passion for their students. They have mm -hmm. a passion for uh, the field that they're in, um, and there's just, it's a great combination to get in our, our students um, come back time and time again and say how much that relationship with their instructors means to them, um, and again, it's just is what it is. You just don't get that everywhere. No, you don't. And uh, it's, you know, if that's not what you want, that's fine, mm -hmm. but when the students come here and they leave, that has left an impact on them. And it's just an environment here yes. um, that really just kind of filters into everything that we do. Absolutely. And you was behind the camera a while ago. I was talking to Tammy uh, when I asked her the question about when she runs into students, you know, maybe shopping for groceries or whatever. Mm -hmm. You saw her face light up uh, and that that's worth more than anything to me, you know, to see because she cares about these people. It's not just a job, you right. know, it's not just teaching or, or whatever uh, their particular job is, but, uh, but to see her face light up like that and know that these kids and these, some of them aren't kids, <laughs> but these students are right. successful in their field. Yeah, and it just, it does, it does bring joy. I know the same thing with our president, you know, it's just, we're here because we care and, yeah. um, you know, it really does, it filters, it comes from the top down. Absolutely. And if you're watching now and you say, there's no way I could afford to do that, <laughs> we've got ways to help, don't we? Absolutely. Uh, first of all, never say never. Um, yeah. You know, we have over 70 different programs that we offer. 
um, where tuition-free programs. And the reason that it's like that, it's through the HOOP Career Grant, which is something that the state of Georgia offers amongst the technical colleges. Mm -hmm. um, and that is, there are 17 industries within the state of Georgia where there are more workers retiring than mm. there are workers going into those fields. For instance, I can think of one I hear over and over again is welding. The average age of the welder is like 55, and they uh, expect a, a really high uh, percentage of um, a gap uh, that where there's not enough um, new welders going into the field. So um, we have programs like that. We have over different, 100 different options that we are not 100, I'm sorry, over 70 options that we offer um, where <clears throat> you can get into one of those programs and the tuition is, is free. Um, if that's not good enough. If you don't want one of those programs, that's fine. But our other programs, we're affordable. We, you're in college for less time. You go out and get a job quicker. Yeah. And the tuition is so much less, so much less expensive. You will not be graduating from OFTC with a mound of debt. That's right. Trying to figure out how you're going to pay for it because you don't know what you want to do and you're not sure where you're going to get your job. Yeah. So you can afford it. If yeah. you're not sure, come out, speak with our financial aid office and um, they'll help you. We There's have, a way. Yeah, scholarships, yeah. tons of things like yeah. that through our foundation. Found, yeah, you took the words mm -hmm. out of my mouth. You know, wonderful foundation on the North and the South campus. and. Uh, there's a way. There is a way. If there's a will there on your part, there's a way here at Oconee Fall Line. I was filming a commercial early this morning at a, a local tire store. They've been in business for 60 years. And one of the guys were not there. She wanted me to come back and film later. And I said, well, is he out sick? He, she said, no, he's in a welding class. He's, he's wanting to be a welder. He's out here learning how to weld. And what another top paying job. Uh, uh, I just met a guy recently, uh, he graduated from Oconee Fall Line in welding, and he's doing underwater mm -hmm. welding. What he makes was crazy money. Can you imagine? Now, not everybody's made to weld underwater, yeah. I realize that, <laughs> but uh, he came to Oconee Fall Line, and I'm not making light of that. I'm just saying you don't have to go off uh, somewhere else. If that's where you want to go, it's fine. There's not mm -hmm. a problem, but you can come right here at home or one of these counties that, mm -hmm. that we service, one of these lab areas, mm -hmm. and make really, really good money. We do, there's just opportunity. Um, we kind of can help you open the door to that opportunity. And you might say, well, I'm not really sure what I wanna do, but I know I need to do something, and I really feel like this might be my best option. Uh, you know, just come out and get started, and yeah. um, you know, we can help you, help you decide, help you figure out what's your best fit. Right, we got people, that's all they do, is help you figure out what you wanna do. And uh, go and start on those core classes, and uh, you gotta get started. You gotta get started somewhere, and why not today? So uh, we're gonna take another break, and we're gonna come back and wrap things up. Stay with us. My name is Laura Youngblood. I am a personal banker here at our Gordon branch at Moore's Bank. We just want to say how wonderful our customers are and thank you for banking Blue. Hi, I'm Amber Shepard and I work in Human Resources in Dublin. Thank you for banking Blue. Hey, good afternoon everyone. My name is Steve Lacey. I'm a commercial lender here at our Highway 96 branch in Warner Robins, Georgia. Uh, we just want to take the time right now to thank you guys for banking Blue. We appreciate you. Hi, I'm Tracy McSwain and I'm in their mortgage department in our gray office. I just want to make sure our customers know how much we really appreciate them and to thank them for banking blue. Hey, I'm Nicole Johnson and I work with customer service for Morris Bank in Dublin and I just want to say thank you to all our customers and thank you for banking blue. Hey, I'm Denise Griffin with Morris Bank in Gray, Georgia in customer service. 
Thank you for Banking Blue. I'm Dora and I'm a teller at the Brandon Street here in Statesboro, Georgia, and thank you for Banking Blue. Hello, my name is Zach Giddens. I work in commercial lending in Warren Robins, Morris Bank, and thank you for Banking Blue. I'm Melissa Wilson, and I work in customer service at Morris Bank in Gordon, Georgia. We appreciate your business, and thank you for Banking Blue. Hi, I'm Julie Lewis, and I work in the credit department in Dublin, Georgia. Thank you for Banking Blue. Hi, my name is Rhonda Porter. I'm a teller here at the Gray Branch. I just want to thank all of our customers for banking with us, and thank you for Banking Blue. I'm Crystal, and I work in the customer service department in Statesboro, Georgia. Thank you for Banking Blue. Hi, I'm Tracy Silva. I'm a customer service rep in Warner Robins, Georgia, and thank you for Banking Blue. Hi, my name is Cliff Wilds. I'm a commercial lender in Statesboro, Georgia. Thank you for Banking Blue. Hey, I'm Carly Curry. I'm a commercial personal banker in downtown Dublin. Thanks for Banking Blue. Hello, everyone. I'm Steve Williams. I'm a commercial lender with Morris Bank. And guys, we are just so excited to have you as a customer. We want to thank you guys for allowing us to serve you during the SBA PP loan process. And uh, thank you so much for just Banking Blue. I'm Gina Willis. I'm a teller at Brooklyn Branch. Thank you for Banking Blue. Vanessa Robinson in the IT department located in Dublin, Georgia. Thank you for Banking Blue. Hi, I'm Leah Arnold, the customer service representative here in Statesboro, Georgia. Thank you for Banking Blue. Hey, I'm Terry Golden. I work at the Brooklyn Branch. Thank you for Banking Blue. Hi, I'm Sonia Alexander, and I work in Human Resources in Dublin, Georgia. And I'd like to thank you for Banking Blue. Hi, my name is Roger Dutra, and I'm the head teller here at the Mall Branch with Morris Bank. And I just want to say thank you for Banking Blue. Hi, my name is Ashley Watson. I'm a Taylor CSR at our Highway 96 branch. I just wanted to stop by and thank you for Banking Blue. Hi, I'm Kim Kennedy and I work in on the retail banking side of Morris Bank and I just wanted to take a minute and thank you all for being our customer and we appreciate you Banking Blue. This is Trey Kim from the credit department at Morris Bank. I'd like to thank you for Banking Blue. Hi, Megan Rowe, Deposit Ops. Thank you for Banking Blue. Hi, I'm Jessica Savage, and I work in the lending department in Statesboro. Thank you for Banking Blue. This is Tanner Underwood from the Mall Branch. I would like to thank you for Banking Blue. Hello, I'm Angela Joyner, and I'm a customer service representative at our Veterans Branch. And we just want to say thank you for Banking Blue. We appreciate your business. Hey, I'm Ashlyn. I'm a teller in Statesboro, Maine. Thank you for Banking Blue. Hey, my name is Lacey Evans. I work at the Mall Branch in Dublin, Georgia. Thank you for Banking Blue. Hi, I'm Amanda Lercy, and I work in the credit department in Dublin. Thank you so much for Banking Blue. Hi, I'm Spence Mullis, President and CEO of Morris Bank. On behalf of all of our 200 bankers in Middle and South Georgia, thank you for your business, but most importantly, thank you for Banking Blue. Welcome back everybody. We're going to wrap things up with Emily Raley here at Oconee Fall Line and we're still here in the Allied part of Louis Livingston building and uh, uh, I always love coming in this building. There are, it's, uh, the whole campus is nice but uh, seeing the picture of Mr. Louis down mm -hmm. uh, stairs and knowing what this meant to him uh, and there's so many positive things. And I know he'd be so proud of how things are going today and uh, uh, I know uh, being led with Erica's leading the, the charge here and, mm -hmm. uh, and you know I, I've been reading in the paper a lot of the universities and all enrollments down. Mm -hmm. What about here? How, what, what's going on with the enrollment? Yeah well um, our enrollment for our um, fall semester which started uh, in August we're actually um, doing really great. Good. Up some, so that's really positive but you know that uh, didn't just you know kind of Happen by chance. We, our faculty, our staff, uh, our senior staff, everyone has worked really hard to um, just to promote what we have. I think in this time that we're in specifically, um, people are just realizing, you know, there are careers that um, are out there that O of T C has um, programs that prepare you for, um, and there are prepared, uh, careers that you know, are built to last, they're necessary uh, to sustain our economy, and, um, you know, we just, our programs are, are really just helping students, helping the community um, yeah. build those, those positive things within their life and um, start successful careers. Yeah, and this community, 
Uh, we talked about it a while ago with Tammy and with you, but the community supports this school uh, in so many ways, not just in the Allied program, but, but throughout the community. Um, and we talked about truck driving, we talked about diesel mechanic, and uh, um, is there any, um, I know we did a story here last year, I guess it was, uh, in automotive uh, technicians. Mm -hmm. Now, you can write your own ticket. Uh, and that's something we don't talk about a whole lot, but that's another program you have here. Yeah. Uh, and, and there's so many programs that Oconee Fall Line offers. And, and we said before the break, come out and just sit down and, and talk to one of the counselors mm -hmm. and let them kind of guide you through the process and uh, get to know you. And, um, and let's figure out, you know, what path is, is best for the student. Not, it's not for the college. Mm -hmm. It's what's best for that student, isn't it? Yeah, and I think sometimes it can be intimidating thinking of getting started. But um, like you said, we offer a caring environment at OFTC. And so when you walk through those doors and you meet with admissions or you meet with an advisor, uh, one of the instructors at OFTC, um, you're going to feel more at ease. Um, sometimes it's just taking that first step, but we want to help you, um, whatever that is. We want to help you. If even if coming here isn't the best fit for you, you know we want what we want you to thrive. So uh, sometimes just taking that first step can be intimidating, but um, don't be intimidated. Just uh, say, you know what, I'm going to do it. I'm going to call up there. I'm going to just go up there yep. and see what they have and. Just see if it might be for me. That's right. Make that first move. That's right. Okay, Emily, I appreciate it. Thanks, James. Always good to talk with you. The information's right there on the screen. It's OFTC.edu is the website. It's a wonderful website. Or just call out here. Just get started. And this time next year, and you look back, you say, I cannot believe this. If I hadn't started a year ago, I wouldn't be where I am today. So uh, one of the many fields, and we just touched on a few today, but uh, get started. Get started and get started at Oconee Fall Line. Thank you so much for joining us today live right here in the Allied Building in the Louis Livingston Building on the campus of Oconee Fall Line. Thank you for joining us today.